fans, Larry Vella here, and this week we have Caradron Overlords, the brand new battle tome for Age of Sigmar. Hey Bulls fans, Larry Vella here. I'm here with Adam Harry. Hey everybody. Here it is. Oh man. Caradron Overlords. I'm so excited about this one. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, we got, we got Dwarven Sky Pirates, man. Steampunk Sky I, I am all about it. This is, yes. I mean, this book is, this is, this is a, I mean, this is GW taking, taking something that everyone knows Dwarves. Yeah. There have been, you know, there have been dwarves, you know, mm -hmm. dwarves are Tolkien, dwarves yeah, are yeah, yeah. everything. Dwarves go back in folklore, you know, thousands of years. But they have made dwarves into something totally unique and funky. Yeah. At the you... same time, it, it totally calls out some of their ancestral heritage because now we have these dwarven sky pirates that are miners in the clouds instead of miners underground. And it still has some of that. Yeah. And there's still some really cool stuff in here. Yeah, I mean, I'm they, pumped about it. I mean, it's what, that it, it, exactly correct. What 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 I really like about it is that they're so different and unique, but yet they're absolutely still dwarves. Yeah. All of like the hallmarks that yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that makes a dwarf a dwarf are still here. They have yeah. the grudges and they're you know they are they really good stubbornness. Right. They're stubborn and they have their super technology and they're you know they're smiths. They yeah. still have all of that. They've just they're short. They're still short. They are still short. Yeah. Yes. Beards. They have the beards. They're short. They, they probably them. still like drinking. Pirates like drinking. And so. they have an and they have a they have a thing about gold. Yeah, they do have a gold thing. They have except a, a, a new exciting type of gold. Ooh. Well, let's uh, let's jump in. And there's the back of the book. There it is. And this book, of course, is going to have tons of backstory about them, like everything you've ever wanted to know, because they they are a brand new faction. So right. So GW that's is, important. is starting from scratch, the, yeah. which is really cool. There's a whole lot of books that. Not just GW, but other manufacturers do. Mm -hmm. Where you know it's the new edition of a faction it's that you've seen before, whatever. This, I mean, page, this, but this is all new. Exactly, and that's why it's super cool. Yeah. It is uh, all un undiscovered. It's got all that background lore. It's got uh, all the different paint schemes that uh, the suggested ones. You know, you can do your own, but there's you know six big. What do you want to call them? Skyports. Skyports. Sky yeah. Ports. Uh, that they kind of represent. Uh, From the skies they come for riches and glory. Really, you can just take that part out. Yeah. Because they come for the riches. They do. They have rules, right? They have rules. We're gonna get to. We're that. gonna get to that. Let's let's, let's dive in. All right, let's go. Right. First off, uh, as, always, as always, I just want to mention this book is packed full of art, and we're gonna point it out. But and it's holy moly, because it's super crazy. I mean, it's this is the type of thing that you don't normally see in yeah. a game that's based on the ground. There's all these crazy <laughs> fighting, fighting in the clouds, fighting in ships, you know, ship to ship, uh, you know, up in, you know, up in, oh, the, yeah. up in the heavens, fighting on weird floating rocks. It's all yeah. craziness. Very cool stuff. Okay, so going over the book really, really quickly, break it down. We have 144 pages. It's a good, mm -hmm. thick it's, uh, battle yeah. tome. It's beefy. So you're gonna have your um, roughly 30 pages of background and what's 30, going- 40 pages, yeah. Uh, what's going on with the Cardron Overlords? Because really, this section and this section is this section is going to cover all the different types of units and stuff, uh -huh. and kind of background about those. And yeah. this whole section is just everything you want to know about the Cardron Overlords. Yeah, you get your yeah, you get everything kind of about the race. Then you get your your ten pages where they're going over uh, in background, not yeah. not rules, um, the basic unit types, so you yep. know yep. what these things are. This is kind of the hobby section, if you will. Mm -hmm. There's painting tips and playing tips. They actually have a playing tip section. They do, yeah, they do. Which is cool. Which is kind of new. Um, and then of course all the different uh, and then overlords, we, and then on and page stuff. 88 we break over and now we're into rules. Yeah. So uh, from 88 through 122. So that's approximately 30 pages. This is all of your, this is your faction special rules. Um, yeah, your battle uh, plans. Right, your battle plans, your allegiance powers, all your, you know, army special rules, if you're, all that If stuff. you're loyal to a specific skyport, if you want to do a themed list, right. it's those list army Yeah, rules. all your artifacts, all that mm -hmm. stuff is in there. Then of course, war scrolls, which is going to be all of the, the units. Yeah, you get Or you. sorry, battalions and then war scrolls for all the units. Yeah. So and all because that this is a brand new faction, um, not a huge amount of battalions and a lot of war scrolls because it's all new. Yeah. So this isn't, say, as an example of, this is a very strong contrast would say, the corn book. Where, yeah, yeah. Where the corn book was like, no new units, but two dozen battalions because yeah. they had to come up with something new. But this is all new stuff. Exactly. This is pretty cool. It's all totally new. Fantastic art, as usual. Ships. Sh airships. Airships, that, that. big floaty airships. Also, new uh, new flying bases. Yeah. There's a whole new set of bases that these guys use. Very unique. For their looking. infantry, too. Yeah. They're all curvy. Yeah. I like them. All right, here we go. Moving on. Okay, we are moving into the background section of the Carjan Overlords. So, um, 
you get all these little cool little, <laughs> it's, they have a neat theme in that as opposed to the other books where they talk about famous people, like mm -hmm. in the background and fluff, uh, here you're getting famous ships. I also want to point out to you, which uh, is cool. real quick, the, the sky ports and the way that the clans work, we're going to get to the, the, the seven rules, as it were, the, their, their code. Some of the sky ports adhere to the code more strictly, than and others. some of them are a little bit loose with the rules. Right. And so if you wanted to do a a literal pirate faction, there is a sky you port can do that. for you. Yeah. Or if you want to do the goody goody goodies, you can yes, do that too. You can do that too. I just want to mention that. And this again, yeah. insane crazy art. Yes. Look at this. Giant giant battles. That's the that's the big leader. Yep. The kind of, I'm, I'm not going to say he's the king, but he has They don't have kings. They don't have kings yeah. because they don't believe in kings because yeah. yes. And just we'll a, get to that. Just a quick background thing about them what happened was these are the guys, the Carter and Overlords are the ones that actually uh, survived through the Age of Chaos right. after everything went bad by escaping to the skies. Yeah, they got onto ships and they fled into the heavens and built yep. a whole culture up there. But and they, they watched, they had to stay back and watch and they didn't intervene and they basically they felt like abandoned by their allies and their gods and, and their, by their kings. And by their own heritage. Yeah. So they, they see they see classic, classic ground-based mm -hmm. uh, dwarf culture as something that that failed them. Yes. When when chaos came, and and thus they built an entire new society based on science, based Sound on. Sound familiar at all? You know, based on, uh, <laughs> you know, based on, you know, on. I'm not going to say logic because they're they're dwarves. They're they have rules though. They, they have, have their own rule. code, they have, which I think they we're gonna have get a code. To. We're going to get to soon. More crazy pictures, and this is basically part of that prosper or die mentality. And the big thing that they discovered is once they went up into the heavens, they discovered ether gold. Yes. Which is a new type of gold. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, so. <laughs> it's magical. Let, let, let's talk a little bit about ether gold because it is the thing that makes this entire culture and faction work. So what is it? So this stuff is found in nature. It's found in the heavens. And it's it, magical. It is magical. Arguably it's magical. They don't well, it, really it define. Well, it kind of shifts with it the. It has a weird, so yeah. it, it develops in veins, kind of yeah. like gold, except it's a gas in its yeah. natural state. So there's these weird, there'll be these weird kind of you know, think of them as like giant, like the Gulf Stream type yeah. of thing, except it's just, the, and so whenever they well, find- like chemtrails. Whenever they find, <laughs> really? Yeah, we went chem, there. Wow, wow. <laughs> Magical chemtrails. I said they believed in science. I know, I know. Oh, right. That's a joke, guys. That's Relax. a joke, that's a joke. Calm it, calm it down, internet, right. we know what you're doing. So they find the stuff and then all their fleets go and mine it mm -hmm. and they con condense it and then they take it back. And to they, their, they mine to it by port. vacuuming it up. Basically. Yes, yes. They, pretty they, cool. they vacuum it up, they take it back and then they're, and then once it's kind of in their, in their main ports and sky ports, it's refined and it is eventually refined into a metal. And, yeah. once, and that metal floats. It exactly. is It is naturally lighter than air, and that is what is, and ether gold is what is used on all of basically the giant gold parts of all of their ships. That's mm -hmm. what, what what makes them float. And so it, these these big balls and then yes. gas cloud like airship things, they're not necessarily filled with air. Right. It's the it's the material itself yeah. is made of of, of so their whole society gold. runs on. And they have to always find more because you know eventually it does you know it can be damaged or, or yeah, whatever and repairs, and, and they use it to hold up their skype so their their cities themselves run on the stuff well without it they would fall to the surface and their yeah. entire culture would would collapse literally also collapse. the other interesting thing about about ether gold is that is that um it attracts monsters it does attract so, the so monsters. when they find it one it's gold so it's ultra valuable floaty gold so of course other people would want to steal it, so they have to fight off mm -hmm. other people or other clans among them th themselves. But it, it also kind of naturally attracts monsters. So yeah. whenever they find big currents of it, they know they got to mine it as fast as possible before the monsters. Speaking show of monsters, up. speaking of crazy monsters, that's what we're talking about right there. Rulers above the clouds. You get a whole thing about that. Once again, fantastic art. We're gonna flip past this. Okay, the code. The okay, code. Okay, this is where we're gonna say it. All you people out in internet land, are you Star Trek fans? Yes. I know there's some Star Trek fans, don't lie. Um, are you Deep Space Nine fans? I am. Okay. We're not going to say that they're exactly the same, because they're not. They're not. They're still good guys. But the carriage and overlords have a whole lot of Ferengi in them. They do. They have quite a bit of Ferengi. So their entire culture is based on the code, and that code includes... Uh, let's Seven see. Seven rules of prosperity what? and the 12 points of election. So... Yeah. Grand Nagus Zek. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly how many rules are there? Seven rules of prosperity and the 12 points of election. Exactly. It's very important 
to note. Uh, again, they made it very clear that these guys are still good guys. And one of the reasons they didn't intervene to help out was they're outnumbered, they're outgunned. It would have broken the rules. It would have broken the rules because it wouldn't have been profitable. Right. So it's, the, the impetus for them to actually engage now is the fact that the Stormcast Eternals launched a successful attack on Chaos. They're pushing it back. Pushing it back and have established cities. And as soon as they established cities, they saw those cities and say, hey, we can trade with those civilizations it's, and it'll be profitable again. And it's time for our culture to reemerge from yes. the heavens. And not only that, but also when they trade with you, they feel a sense of uh, uh, protection. So they have to protect their trade investments. Yes. So for them, it is now profitable to be seen. And that's why they're just now showing up. All right. Uh, here we get a whole bunch of, uh, this is a couple pages basically on yeah. on ether gold, what it is, how it works. Science and then you and get this cool thing here. Um, that talks about um, the the Karajan, with the exception of those from I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Barak Thring. Barak Thring. Barak I'm Thring. Thring. Um, have increasingly come to place science above worship of the ancestor gods. Although there is the one city yeah, yeah. that's still there. They're about. still about the ancestors. Yeah, exactly. So we get all that. Um, this is kind of the alchemical stuff that they do to help refine the, the Aether Gold. It's just a bunch of the different realms and they have to why they travel to the different realms and stuff like that they have to get the right chemicals and the right mixtures and it's crazy mm -hmm. it's all about profit they are still mainly uh they mainly occupy the um realm the realm fire right? the realm of uh metal shaman shaman yeah, yeah that's where Shimon. they are because obviously yeah. they're there to get them to, to get ether gold where's all the ether gold that's going to be in the kind of the yeah the realm of and I want to point this out too. You can kind of you can kind of see like the realm of fire dwarf that that icon. I think I think I thought these were all really cool. The realm of death. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I like it. Well, pretty cool stuff. Sky fleets. Uh, we're gonna. This is gonna. There's gonna be several pages just talking about how the fleets operate, how they how they're yeah. organized. You know, all that all that good stuff. Weapons. The suits so of cool. armor. Oh, yeah. I mean, totally cool. Yeah. I mean. And again, they look at they, that. They, look they, at that thing. <laughs> it's got a pressure gauge on it or something? I don't know. This is a fumigator or billow gun. There you go. Just gonna point that out. They they always wear their armor. They never go out into the, the clouds yep. without their suits of armor. This is the one and only picture in this mm -hmm. entire battle tone that shows what they look like. Outside um, of their armor. Outside with apparently lots of... They like the tats. Lots of tats. Probably magical tats. I don't, I think, I, I think. I, or, or science tests. I don't I think don't so. Know. Okay, uh, we're gonna move on. We're gonna get to, uh, they talk about all of the, the We're six. gonna show this one up, but these are three of the big uh, yeah. skyports. Yeah, three of the big, of the big skyports. Look at that thing. Look at that crazy. One of those monsters you mentioned. That yes, there's five another sky whales it. and they have, yeah, they killed it and now they're all landing on it and mining it. So there's six different great skyports, which yeah. are the giant floating cities. They each have their own culture. We'll I, show I, off of one or two. I mean, really, you know, we're not gonna... I mean, it's it's exactly what, what you'd expect. It's a, it's a very close analog to say Eldar Craft Worlds. It's yeah. that kind of a thing. They're yeah. each, you know, and, and when you build your army, you're gonna pick the one you're from and it's gonna have its own culture and special rules. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, you get uh, several pages. Uh, we're just going to show you these. On uh, this is showing you uh, where six, six Shimon where in skyports are yeah kind of. uh, where in the in the realm of metal the skyports last known positions are. So you can see them like this city was last reported there, and you can see that they park their cities in the middle of the of the natural currents of yeah. ether gold whenever they find them. But as those currents drift, they have to move their they, cities to yeah. stay along with them. So they're never in one place for too, too yeah, long. Yeah, exactly. They're always kind of moving around. Yep. Which is cool. You got your obviously your page. Yeah, on. this is these pages are neat. They're like the timelines, but they they're also kind of disjointed. You have to kind of follow them, kind of weird. But mm -hmm. I always like those. Uh, this page I think is really cool because uh, this is talking about it's it's still background, but it's cool because it opens up the this concept. So this thing here on the an ancestral hammer, if you look at this, uh, this is basically a battleship. And as you can oh, see yeah. from the number of it, they talk about how how these things are relatively rare, but each of the Sky Cities, uh, Skyports does have several of them that they mm. use in times of emergency. So I don't know. I mean, if, if Age of Sigmar ever starts to move like in the like in the apocalypse direction and they want oh, yeah. like really big mega kits, oh, man. right there, baby. Also, I love how they have the uh, structure for profit. They talk about the wealth and who, which cities have the most Urgul and stuff like that. The regalia of the Skyports. There's a fairly long section here. We'll show you a couple pages of it. This is exactly what you expect. This is the painting section. Yeah, this section. is the painting section, and it has all the cool paint schemes, and uh, you know, ranging from some of these guys are very bright. 
Yes. And some of them are very low key and natural yeah, yeah. colors and the, you know, from Skyport to, to, to Skyport. But um, you're gonna get to, these guys actually are pretty colorful, especially yeah. uh, especially considering uh, compared to like a lot of the, uh, kind of the way like a dwarf army used to mm -hmm. look like, say in fantasy, where they were, you know, yes, they were, they had a lot of metal, but they were fairly kind of naturalistic in tone. Mm -hmm. These guys are really- Have kinda, some very vibrant color yeah. options. If you like purple, this, have, this is you, a good army. You have found your faction. Yeah. Uh, purple and cream. I'm gonna flip through and show you a couple more. There's a good. There's a good. There's two more. Yeah. yeah. These guys are purple and silver. There's blue guys. These guys are cream These and guys red. Are pretty cool, actually. <laughs> yeah. There's all. There's just all really cool looking. Uh, you're gonna get your uh, section. Uh, okay, so uh, prospectors and privateers. We're gonna get about ten pages here. Uh, we'll show you a, a couple of them. This is where they're going over the in, heroes. in background heroes, yeah. major units, just letting you know like what are these miniatures that you're going to be purchasing. And as we mentioned earlier, there are no kings. So um, this is a very uh, they're Mer led by meritocracy like, type of society. Yep. If you keep doing well, you keep getting promoted, and if Fair. you if you want to stay in powder, you've got you've got to keep winning, which is where we get to the first guy, right here, Brock, Brock Grunson. Brock Grunson. He is the admiral of the fleets of the Cardron Overlord. So basically, he's the high admiral. He's the, he's the big big Kahuna. Admirals are pretty much like the equivalent of generals in other armies. So your your big yeah. officer who's going to be leading your army is probably an admiral, and he's the He's the, he's the admiral of admirals. He's the admiral of admirals. Also, just gonna point this out. He looks awesome. Liz. He <laughs> is wearing a top hat, totally uh, wear a, a gold suit, guns, he floats. Yep. He has his ether gold thing, and he has a monocle. He does. This is the Monopoly, this is the Monopoly man. That is the Monopoly man. <laughs> this is the Monopoly man, really mad at me. Oh yeah. I'm gonna get my Monopoly. <laughs> yeah. I don't care who I have to kill to get it. Does he, does he, does he pass go? He does pass go, and he collects your $200. Bingo. <laughs> Pretty he's, great. He's great. Uh, you get basic stuff, you know. Again, more about the admirals. Yeah, admirals. Kind of a um, breakdown. Ether chemists. All of these guys are units who have rules, so you get your little section on basically, like, what are these things and how do they work. I love that they're all called, called Arcanauts, too. That was really cool. The, the piece of art that set the internet on fire when GW yeah. first revealed it about a month ago. Um, uh, just, just. I mean, this book is full of this stuff. Oh, yeah. Big boats, you know, the big sky ships, and guys flying all over the place, being attacked by bloodthirsters. It's all happening, you know. They do fight against the, 10, the forces of chaos quite over a bit. the sea. Exactly. Over the sea kind of a thing. So you get to learn about, you know, all of them, how they work. Uh, we'll skip past that. Uh, uh, the section that, of course, is just going to make everyone go nuts because this army is so beautiful and so different. So all the painted sections. And, oh, yeah. And this book is just crazy. It's just full oh, yeah. of all the stuff. I mean, look at that. I mean, look at that. Just look at it. It's just, <laughs> this is crazy. Also, I don't know if this was Photoshop or if they bought a whole bunch of cotton, but now they had well, to- Why not both, man? But they had to do clouds. They did, they did. They had to clouds. do- It's all over the place. So, they got that smoke machine out and just went nuts. I don't even, I don't think that, th that is not a smoke machine. But the-, the Some of it is. Well, they they got their colored lights- They did. But, but they're behind the- GW is keeping the cotton industry It's business. pretty cool. Oh, check this out. Look who's way back there in the background, like in soft focus. Yep, those, those are the, are, those are the Zangors. Yeah, those, those are Zangors on their little. Oh, right, because you're because you're they can fly, man. Right, because you're going to have all the sky wars between the guys on discs and these guys. Yeah. Oh, totally. Sweet. Well, they do attract monsters. They do attract monsters. So. Okay, moving on. We are fighting in the clouds, fighting yeah. on the rocks in the clouds. There are rocks in the clouds. I don't know how that works. If or, they have, I'm, I'm going to blame Aether Gold. If they have Aether Gold, they would look. Um, like that's... if they had naturally occurring deposits. There you go. Sky clouds. What happens. Um. More stuff, yeah. They do come down on the ground. They actually have transports, and they have rules. Actually, we'll get to a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see different, different, uh, um, different paint schemes on some of these guys. Apparently, coming down on the ground and kicking some undead butt. Yeah. Or maybe, or maybe you have uh, like a ship wrecks on a on a floating uh, on like a floating rock, oh. and everybody dies because they, they come have back no food, undead. and then they're undead, and then they're like, hey, <laughs> we want our ether gold. We need to throw these skeletons right off here. Right? It's pretty good. There's a ton of it. It's all oh, yeah. awesome. Tons of awesome pictures. The the big heavy metal team paint jobs. Mm -hmm. really, just really good look at those. Mr. Monopoly. Oh, again, it's absolutely so good. fantastic. You, you get two categories of these, of the, the individual, of, of kind of the elite infantry, uh, engine riggers, and sky wardens, who each kind of have their own little personal flying devices. Yeah. Because they're rich and awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, sky wardens are elite combat troops, so these are the guys who are going to be swooping in. They're kind of, they're kind of your uh, cavalry unit. Yeah, yeah. Whereas engine riggers, uh, these are mechanics. Okay. So these are guys who have tools and they're gonna be zipping around 
so the, these guys uh, are going to work um, very similar to say tech marines. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, these these guys are going to be zipping around from ship to ship during the game, trying to fix them up. Very cool. Which is cool. It's a cool concept. Uh, the normal infantry, uh, Grunstock Thunderers, and Arcanaut companies. Uh, the Arcanaut company. This is your normal bread and butter infantry. Yeah. And these are your uh, heavy heavy weapon guys. Yeah, and also I want to note too that the uh, the Grunstock Thunderers came from um, the Grunstock corporation so it's kind of a corporation within within the the society that's totally that cool. they hired out because they were so good they were such good marksmen that the first sky port was like hey we want to hire those guys permanently and of course the other sky ports were like wait a minute we want to hire them too so now the grunstock thunders have like little academies and stuff that they're constantly cranking out new so they're mercenaries they're merc they're mercenaries within the mercenaries it's, that's totally it's pretty cool. cool also i would like to point out that one of them has a drill bill Drill bill. That is a bird. That is a mechanical bird with a drill for a beak. That is awesome. And it actually has rules. Yeah, it does actually. <laughs> when you it come, will mess you up when you come too close. It will peck your face to off. you. It will attack you and peck you, which would be bad if it were a normal bird. But if birds has had a drill drills bit. for a beak, it would be yeah. bad. Yeah. So totally cool. All the ships. All oh, the ships are so cool. There's basically three types, right? We've got yeah. the little quick. We have the gun hauler, gun hauler which yeah. is a very small ship, two man crew. It's a gun, you know. It's, yeah, you know, couple of guns. That's whatever. your that's your quick and light ship. You have the Arcanaut frigate. This is your your middleweight ship. Kind of your you gunboat. Can see. Yeah, it has more. It has more weapons. A few more guys on board. It's a it's it's a much beefier craft. And then you have the big guy. You have the ironclad. And this is the big transport. Right. You can see it has. You know, it has a full interior. It has a lower deck, and it carries tons of guys. So yeah. this is your main. This is your big. You know. Kind it has of a your, boarding plank of all things. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I totally want to make Skyfire too. I know. It's, they look so. They look so good. Um, how to painting paint them. section, yeah. Painting section, just some key basics. All you hobbyists out there, paint your models. Paint your models. <laughs> be, be good to each other. Uh, they, you get different uh, ideas on how to do the bases. Yeah. For different kind of themes and realms mm -hmm. that they might be in, you get uh, um, tips on painting the runes, which yeah. is kind of fun. Tip, tips on painting all their runes. Because yeah. they have many runes. They're actually not that difficult if you know how to break it down, but. That's what that's And like now, air fleets of the overlords, and this is where we get into rules. Yeah. So, so this is this is a, a one of the new style books in terms of like it's got all the path to glory rules in there. Yep. It's got new battle plans, which are missions. If you want to play mm -hmm. those, it's got all the allegiance abilities and stuff like that. You got all the artifacts. Yep. Command traits, battle traits. Uh, if you are pledged to a specific skyport, you get those special rules too. Uh -huh. um, we're not going to show all that stuff off. But we're going to show a couple of them. Yeah. So the cool thing, so the big army mechanic, so every army has a mechanic. And the yeah. big army mechanic that these guys have is this, which is their entire culture um, is based off of, so they have battle traits and their big one is stick to the code. Yeah. So their entire culture is based on the code. Yeah. So how it works is when you build your army, you're going to pick which article because there's mm -hmm. the there's the articles of prosperity. Yep. So you're you're going to pick one article, or you could roll for it randomly if you believe in that. Then you're going to pick your amendment, and then you're going to pick your footnote. So they all believe in the code, but they all follow the code in their own little special way. But these are really just guidelines. Yes, which is fantastic. So <laughs> how it's going to work is is you're going to pick which of these three, yeah. you know, one, you know, one from here, one from here, and one from here, and those will be the special rules for your army. Yeah. Which is really cool. So now you can do this. You can and, do a randomized one. Now you could do a randomized one, yeah. or you could just pick, or you can pick, um, or each of the six sky ports they actually give them to you. Yeah. So if you and if you and if you pick one of the six sky ports, not only do you get your cool awesome paint scheme. Yep. You but, get your cool awesome painting. But they tell you article, this amendment, is your article. Footnote. This is your amendment. Yep. This is your, your your footnote, and then you gain a cup a, a, a special rule also Ooh. on top of it as your benefit for yeah. having you know a price fix menu basically. Yeah. So it's very cool. So we'll we'll show you these guys. Barak Nar as an example. They're the first one. So what yep. do they have? They have their article is respect your commanders. So they reroll battle shock tests when you're within eight inches of a hero. It can be so, randomly useful. So yeah. that's really good. Uh, trust ethermantics, not superstition. Heroes can attempt to unbind one spell in each enemy hero phase as if they were wizards. Pretty sweet. Nice. Uh, if they if uh, if they can already attempt to unbind one spell, they can attempt to unbind two spells instead. So one of the things that um, as we're going through here, this is like this entire battle tome. This is the total opposite of of uh, disciples of Zinch, basically. These yeah. guys have no magic. 
They have no magic. They're just like all. regular other dwarves from previous editions. But not the, big on magic, but they can totally still defend. But they, yeah, they can shut magic down. Yeah. really well. Uh, there's uh. footnotes uh, through knowledge power once per battle in your opponent's hero phase when your heroes uh, can each attempt to unbind one additional spell. Uh, you can choose an additional footnote from page 99 for a bark in our fleet. Other than these are just guidelines. So, yeah, on top of this amendment, your heroes can unbind too. You can do it an additional time. Yep. So they really, this particular fleet will shut down magic. And then their special faction ability that you get because you're taking them and not picking them yourself, they get a bonus ability. And their bonus ability is add one to any unbinding rolls made for heroes. So you feeling the theme here? Yeah. <laughs> these they guys. They unbind some stuff. Yeah. These guys, it's going to be a really. Yeah. yeah, if you're playing like a Zinch army against these guys, if you're if you're casting a lot of spells, you're gonna, that, have, a, you're gonna yeah. have a hard, yeah. a lot of buff spells. They're gonna shut those down. That is gonna be a hard, Actually, hard road. Uh, ironically, the uh, the corn guys with their the new blood priest powers. That's oh gonna, yeah, that's gonna be you rough. Can shut that down too. Yeah. Anyway, I like that. Um, so there's how the whole system works. You're gonna get to see it. So you know they have command traits and they have their battle traits. We got battle uh, battalions up next, right? Uh, you get a couple. Um, uh, you have, um, I'm going to show you some of these. Yeah. Uh, you get three pages of artifacts. Well, yep, three, yep. Three, three charts. Three different types. Here's one, and moving on. We're not going to go We're not going to go not gonna show all of them. Yep. Uh, cost of victory. So you get all your battle plans. And there's a ton of, there's, I believe, six yeah. in here. And these, again, missions that you can do. Right, and these are all missions, and these are, and these are missions designed to specifically highlight the way that these guys fight, because they tend to start off the board with, mm -hmm. not, you know, all in the air, and then they have to, you know, then they, they, Come, you know, this is an army that's actually very maneuverable. Yeah. Because, well, they're not fast, but they can get to where they want to. Yeah, yeah. Because they can just, you know, those ships can come down. And drop the, the ships guys are off. fairly quick, I think, yeah. but the, but the yeah, actual yeah. infantry model is not so much. Exactly. Once they hit the ground, they're slow, but they're going to be able to get to, where, to yeah. where, they, where they want to, which is a very cool mechanic. Uh, you get tons of that. Lots and lots of those. Uh, you get. Uh, your path to glory mm -hmm. for all you guys doing narrative campaigns. Which is a ton of fun, by the way. Which is totally fun. Totally you get a full out. path to glory path in here with special upgrades, everything you need. It's all cool. Uh, rules. And then um, examples for how to how to fight battles with them. Uh, here's the thing that's actually neat. Uh, you get a two-page spread on tactics and deployment. Because yeah. this army functions so differently than lots yeah. of others, you actually get... We haven't seen this in a long time. Yeah, we haven't for, seen this in a very long time. For them to be like, here's an example of like how I would build an army and actually like ways to deploy your... you know. So it's nice to see them kind of giving yeah. a little bit more actual... I think it's part of, part of the reason they, they probably chose to do that was because the, the fleets function so differently from everything else in Age of Sigmar. Yep. Um, with especially, this is the first uh, transport, you know, these are the first, tra first transports we've had in the game. We've right. had stuff basically deep strike uh, with the Stormcast, but we've never had models riding in other models before. So okay. that's kind of why we want to, I think they wanted to showcase what they could do. So. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we're going to skip past uh, and we're going to, so, so there's uh, a, a small set of battalions. We're going to show you one of those. Yep. And uh, it's going to be this guy right here, the Kerrigan Overlord's Grand Armada. Uh, the Grand Armada is... Uh, one Arcanaut Admiral, one uh, Iron Sky Command, one Iron Sky Squadron, and one Grun Grunstock Escort Wing. Okay. Which those are all smaller battalions, uh, uh, smaller Un tools. units. Yes. Uh, In your hero phase of your first turn, all your Sky Vessels can move as if it were the movement phase. They can act normally for the remainder of your turn, allowing them to dis. So basically, you get extra move during your right. First so hero phase. yeah, on turn one, basically all your ships get a double move, which is pretty. Sweet. Which is pretty good, making them even faster. Yep. And uh, they're constitutional experts. As long as the admiral and at least one other hero from the Grand Armada are on the battlefield, you can use footnotes. Other than these are just guidelines. Once per battle round, rather than once per battle. Wow. Which is pretty good. That if is. You remember some of those. That nice is footnotes. pretty good. All right. Next, we're gonna show you. We're gonna we're gonna take you really quickly over to. We're just gonna show off one of the uh, or two, I guess, of the uh, the war scrolls. Again, the war scrolls will be online with the yes. units when those go live. So um, we're gonna show you the ironclad. Yeah, the ironclad. This is, this is one of the big. Ships. This is this is the big ship, and the ironclad is very cool, and we want to go over it and take some some time because um, there's a lot of rules here. It's a transport. Yeah. So this is, this is, now we've seen, like, this is what a transport looks like in Age of Sigmar, which is something, I mean, this is really cool and kind of, you know, you know, amazing. First of all, this, this monster has 18 wounds, eight inch move, four plus save, seven bravery, and just all the guns. Now it's not 
it's not technically a monster. It is actually a war machine, sky yes. vessel. Some of the key words there. Yep. So um, pretty cool. It is order, which is nice uh, for all the order yep. players. Uh, so very cool stuff. But yeah, it's a, it is a, it's still a monster because those, those massive And it just has, I mean, look at all the stuff it has. It has uh, ether shot carbines, grud settler bombs, fragmentation charges, detonation drills, ether shot torpedoes. I mean, it has all those things. It doesn't have like pick one of them. It's just, I mean, this is just a arsenal. Yeah. Well, and again, it functions. It's got the damage table, so the the more wounds it suffers, uh, the less it attacks. It kind of puts out and stuff like that, which makes sense. If there is a losing crew, essentially, and we're gonna go over the rules and and, and talk a little bit about them. So, uh, etheric navigator. If there's a navigator uh, visible to it, you can move an extra D3 inches in the movement phase. So it's got an eight inch move. That plus D3. Plus D3. Pretty good. Um, flagship, in each of your hero phases, one ironclad in your army can raise one of the following signals and it affects all visible friendly sky vessels. Okay, so every turn basically it's this gonna- This is a flagship so we can right. give orders essentially. Yeah, so it's going to, and you have four different things that you can choose from. So you're gonna pick one of them every turn and then all your ships within line of sight are gonna be able to do that thing, yeah. which is cool. So fire at will, add two to the, to the attack char characteristics of your ether shot carbines, which are up here. Yeah. Those are 12 inch, uh, they they'll have more X. attacks. They start with eight, and right. Then and as they up. get damaged, it yeah, goes down. It down. So that could be up to ten. Uh, hit on a three up, wound on a four up, uh, minus one rend, one damage. So that's just it, that's just a lot of attacks. Yeah. Prove your worth, or sorry, make every shot count. We roll uh, hit rolls of one in the shooting nice. phase. Nice with so all your weapons. Always, which is nice. Uh, prove your worth. Add three inches to the range of characteristics of all missile weapons. Which, if you're firing, <laughs> extra all of them. Uh, where are the skies? We roll hit and wound rolls of one for attacks directed against units that can fly. So if you have other people having flyers, guess what? You're shooting them more accurately. And this is, I love rules like that because it's it's not really gonna change the game that much, but it's cool because like that is an example of, it is a characterful rule. Like yeah. that is a rule that's put in there to represent these guys. This is a flying army. These guys live and operate in they the skies. The skies. And so if you fly, they're not afraid of you. Yeah. They're going to be, you know, this is their this is their home. Yeah. Bat in the, yeah, bat bat in the hatches. hatches. <laughs> in each of your hero phases, before any unit disembarks, an ironclad captain uh, can give this order. If they do, until your next hero phase, you can reroll saves of one for this model, but no other, but no unit can disembark or embark. So basically, okay. you're shut. You're you're closing all you're the locking doors, them down. locking it down. So this model actually gets to reroll ones on its save, which is pretty good. But nobody can embark or disembark. Right. So, so once you get right, exactly, um, it's got bomb racks, and this has uh, there's different ty there's two different ways that you can drop bombs. Yep. Which is cool. Um, we'll Sky hooks. Uh, that uh, that allows you to, I believe, if they f suffer a wound, uh, you can move D6 uh, as long as it ends its move closer to one of the units. So if you, oh, if you wound somebody cool. with a skyhook, you can basically move towards them. Right, it's D6s. like a harpoon, and yeah. then they reel themselves in, yeah. which is very cool. Uh, Supremacy Mine, once per, like the big one. once per battle when an enemy unit that can fly, once again, um, ends its charge within one inches of you, you can launch the Supremacy Mine. When you do, roll a die. On a two or more, that unit, wow, suffers D6 mortal wound. <laughs> That's crazy. So... That could sting. Yeah. Could sting. And, and so once again, you're seeing a theme here, which is that these guys have special rules that really mess up flying enemies. Yeah. Which is very cool. So just to give you an idea too, uh, skipping around a little bit, the vessel, it can carry 20 Skyfarer models and relative safely. You can go overburden though, and you can carry up to 25 Skyfarer models. Uh, for each Skyfarer over 20 that it carries, reduce the, its move by <laughs> one inch, which is kind of crazy. That is funny. So you might end up moving only uh, three inches a turn. Well, it could also be cool because the, you might have to do that mid game. Yeah. Like you might be like, oh, I really need to pick these guys up and yeah. to, like take them to this other objective. And you're like, oh, it's, you know, it's not can't quite move, enough. Can't move. But so that's kind of a cool concept. You can't actually start the Skyfair models uh, embarked. Embarked on it. Um, yeah, you just declare. And then the embark rules and the disembark rules are here. Yeah, and these, let's let's actually go over these. These, the, these are important because this is yeah. basically how these are going to work from here on out as far as you can tell. So. Yeah. Okay, if all models uh, move, uh, can move within three inches of this it. This is embarking. In the movement phase, they can embark. You remove them, you remove the unit from the battlefield and place it to one side and it's embarked. So everyone has to get within three inches. Yeah. Which is cool. Uh, 
Once they're embarked, they can't do anything or be affected in any way while they're embarked unless specifically stated abilities that affect other units within a certain range have no effect or while that unit, uh, and you cannot measure to or from. Okay, so basically, once they're in, they're in, and if they have special powers that like have radiuses or affect things, none of that go goes into effect. So you're not gonna be able to do the weird like, oh, I'm like plus two or I increased my save, so I'm yeah. gonna get on board the ship and now the ship's better, all that stuff. That doesn't work. Yeah. That's not how this works. Yeah. You get on, you have a three once inch you move get to in, get in, and once you're, you're in. You are cargo. You're cargo and you're effectively not on the table. Exactly. If the ironclad is destroyed, the passengers bail out. Okay, good. So you're not all automatically destroyed. You roll a die for each model. For on each roll of one, the model is slain. And then, okay, so a very low yeah. chance of- For, for of each roll of a one, a model from that model's unit, your choice is slain. The embarked units must then disembark before the vessel is removed. So that's actually very forgiving yeah. by game standard. So if you got 25 guys on board, the thing blows up. All of your ones. You're gonna you roll 25 dice, scrubs. you pull the, yeah, exactly. And yeah. all, the, all the ones are dead and everybody else gets out immediately. Yeah. So that's not bad. Yeah. Uh, and then disembarking, how does the, this work? Any unit that begins its hero phase embarked uh, can disembark. If you disembark, you set up the entire unit so all units are within, oh, sorry, all models are within three inches and none are within three inches of any enemy models. Any disembarked, and then anyone who can't fit is slain. Wow, so that's that's kind of harsh, but... But uh, you get a three inch radius yeah. from a big, huge model. That, yeah, that's on a top of that That's though, a really large... Uh, the units that disembark can then act normally, including using abilities, uh, that can be used during the fear phase, and for the remainder of the turn, a unit cannot disembark and embark in the same turn. So, you can get out and effectively assault when you get out. Yep. You act normally. Yep. Which is kind of a big Because deal. you get out in the... Uh, hero phase. In the hero phase, yep. So, and not only that, you can get out in the hero phase, and if you have heroes, those heroes can also do their, do their hero phase stuff. Yep. Which is pretty neat. So that's the embark and de de uh, disembark rules. Yeah, really, really, actually, really, really clean to be yeah. honest really really clean it's you know it's get everybody within three inches move the bottle if you can't there's the, yeah. well uh well they have to be within oh, three to inches yeah, to, yeah. to actually get in and, it, and yeah, if, if, if there's one guy out the unit can't embark so yeah. everybody but three inches is pretty forgiving so yeah, everyone yeah. within three inches then you take the unit off the board put them yeah. in and they're in once they're in they basically don't exist in any way unless they have some special rule that specifically allows them to right right and then they can get out and if they get out you place them within three inches yeah. and not within three inches of any enemy models, and anyone you, you can't fit is destroyed. And yeah. then finally, if they're on board the ship and the ship is destroyed, they're killed on a model-by-model model basis if they roll a one. I do want to call this out real quick, uh, because according to the way I'm interpreting this, if I happen to surround one of those models and kill, kill it, and it's embarked, I wipe the unit. But that's going to be really difficult to, like, bubble wrap a model. Right. That way. I've, I've I'm bubble wrapped the lantern. I'm sure you can. I'm sure I'm you saying, can. I'm just saying. Sure. Yes, <laughs> it's po it's possible. I, I have look. I have I have bubble wrapped several things before uh, in my in my day. So I'll uh, agree with you. It's possible. So that yeah. is the Arcanaut Ironclad. Probably the most interesting as far as like big picture yeah, new yeah. things to the game. Uh, unit, uh, really exciting faction. I think it's really really cool. And that's um, pretty much it. That's pretty much it. There are points. There are. That, we're not going to show those off. Sorry. Yeah. Go buy the book. Yeah, go, go by the book. All the battle points are in there. So all you guys who are doing uh, 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 competitive play from General's Handbook, it's in here. you are covered. Yep. But fantastic range, beautiful, really different rules, a new army that looks good, plays different. Yeah. I mean, what what, what more do you That's want? That's an awesome theme. And yeah. they have reinvented dwarves. Yeah. For Age of Sigmar. Very cool. Very, very cool. There you go, folks. That is our overview of Battle Tome Carriage and Overlords. Yeah, we're out. What's the first rule of acquisition? The first rule of acquisition. Wait, it's not acquisition. It's the rules of prospect. But anyway, <laughs> it's when you have their money, you never give it back. Exactly. Bingo. Cards on Arbor Lords. Thanks for watching. I'm Adam Harry. And I'm Larry Bella. Have a good one.